Hey everyone, as promised, um, we're going to do a video now on the actual build. Uh, we bought this 2006 Honda Odyssey, ripped all the seats out of it, and uh, decided to convert it to a, a mini camper RV. And um, we utilized all kinds of resources online, YouTube, hours and hours and hours of watching, Facebook groups, websites. Um, We'll post some links to references that are very, very useful, um, very good resources. And um, thanks to all those references that we post in the description of the video. We'll also do our best to post some measurements and dimensions for you in the description as well. I'll probably verbalize a few of them the best I can uh, as we go along. But just to give you a quick overview of how everything functions uh, and the configuration we decided on, we decided to go with an L-shaped configuration which uh, would normally have our mattresses on it and it functions really as a, a sofa by day and then we pull out the slat bed and top it off with the mattresses converting it into a bed by night uh, we wanted to make this as efficient as possible uh, it's still a work in progress nothing is perfect i have more to use with this uh, i'm going to probably raise the height a little bit more um, i find i have more than enough headroom so we figure we can gain some more storage by, by lifting the legs a little bit so I do have some work to do we actually want to stain everything at some point I have some fine tuning to do to the slat bed so this is just a work in progress and our hope is that you can gain some ideas from this and, and make something that's bigger and better but to give you a quick uh, demonstration this is the back section I built this in two back or two sections actually when I originally built it it was one piece all together we decided we needed to change route uh, so I pulled it out chopped it up and turned it into two sections uh, because it works better that way so what we have here is uh, a piece of plywood that we've piano hinged in so we can actually utilize all the what was third row stow seat section area for storage we put just about everything we need uh, in here for storage and normally it's full, but we emptied it out for the purpose of this video. And this just uh, it piano hinges, <clears throat> closes down. We actually left a little bit of a lip here so we can get our fingers under it. Um, we may decide to put some kind of loop or something in here uh, to, to uh, make it easier to grab, but it's quite easy now. And we also have this, uh, just a piece of plywood cut out. I bolt it in so we can actually prop it open. And that works with the, with the, um, with the mattress on it. Another thing, one of the other things we did for safety, more than anything, um, was I utilized one of the bolts that actually um, fastened the third row seat. I bought some hardware, utilized the bolt, the factory bolt, so I could bolt this, um, I forget what they call this, it's really an um, adjustable. Um, I don't know really what this is called, but it's it's hooked on both ends and it actually fastens to the wood here. So this is not going to move um, at all. And it doesn't really have far to go if it, if it did this way, but it's definitely not going to move front or back. One of the mistakes I made I want to mention, and this has been a learning process. Uh, when I originally built this, right now it's 46 inches wide. Originally it was 48 inches wide the problem with that is if i ever got a flat tire honda's spare tires are behind this piece of molding here it was so tight i couldn't get the flat the, the molding off to get the tire out if i ever had a repair to do so we actually ended up taking this out reducing the size to 46 now i can get in here and get the tire out so what i'd like to do uh, i'm going to walk around inside and show you the slat bed pull out and how that functions then we'll come back and talk a little bit uh, about dimensions. Originally when we built this, we were just gonna do a trifold um, platform with plywood that would actually slide in and it would fold up because it was trifold into a sofa back. But we started doing more research and my wife really wanted a slat bed. So we had to put the thinking cap on and figure out how do we make this. I'm gonna post a very valuable link to uh, a resource Mel's Van Life, his YouTube channel, has a great description of the slat bed. It's very similar to this. We actually utilized his idea 
a lot in our design of this. I highly recommend if you want to build a slat bed, review Mel's Van Life YouTube channel, which I'll link in the description. So we again wanted to con always consider how can we maximize storage in such a small space. So we decided right away we wanted we want this to be hinged so it's not a permanent fixture here. We could actually lift up on this. And um, we don't have a prop. Sometimes we have a prop here we can hold this open with. I don't have it with me. But um, there was one question on a Facebook group I'm in asking about legs for the slat bed. We have two little legs um, here. This one I gotta tighten up a little bit. Uh, that will actually hold this as it pulls out, pulls out allowing support. My wife sleeps on, on this side of the slat bed when it's, when it's pulled out and I sleep on uh, the more stationary one. So the frame here, um, supports everything it's it's mounted it's not going anywhere and you have your slat bed that picks up the storage which can be accessible from the top or from the bottom uh, when we raise it a little bit it'll allow for a little more storage um, so when you drop this down and I'm gonna do a quick uh, pull out and you might have seen this already in, in a previous video I still have some fine-tuning to do on this as I said but to pull it into bed mode you just one person can do this very easily that's bed mode. Um, these are plywood, three quarter inch plywood slats that I ripped. And I'll talk a little bit about the tools in a moment that were used for all of this. I am by no means uh, a carpenter. And you can see it just, it goes together very easily. Um, so that is basically the overview of the slat bed. Later came a little bit of shelving that we put into this. This is still a work in progress. We're still developing. We're going to add some additional shelving to it. So we'll probably do more on the shelving when we get there. Uh, we have plans for, for other videos as well. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about the lumber used. We chose to use two by three lumber for frame. For all the frame and legs, we used two by three lumber and then we used three quarter inch plywood for the slats and the storage cover for the back section. The shelving is actually half inch plywood. That'll come at another time though. Um, so that's basically the entire build. We had piano hinges. Uh, they're standard T hinges, I think they're called, uh, that, you, that were used for the slat bed. We used deck screws for the frame because they really do a good job tightening and binding together. We used various wood screws for the slats. Um, so we used a whole mix uh, of different screws where, where needed and what was appropriate for where it was needed. Uh, one thing we did do, because this was a little out of square, we bought additional uh, squaring brackets from Home Depot and loosened these screws up a little bit to make sure everything was square. It just allowed the plywood to fit better. It was out of square and it didn't fit that well. Um, so we used those as well. Also want to talk to you a little bit, bit about my experience with carpentry and the shop that we use. So we live in a condominium in North Carolina. And if anyone lives in HOAs or homeowner associations, you know they have strict policies on, on everything, basically. Um, our dining room was converted to the shop. So literally this entire thing was built on a dining room table that we lined with cardboard so we didn't scratch it. We did a lot of cutting um, and sanding out on our balcony. So our living um, place became our shop for tools nothing really fancy or anything basically I think four or five tools were used we had a circular saw I used a hand saw a sanding block a power drill a screwdriver a level um, that pretty much wraps up various drill bits so just common tools were used for all of this um, I'm not really very experienced in, in uh, anything outside of just rough carpentry, so I think anyone with a little thought actually can do it. If we can do it, you can do it. Uh, a little bit about the dimensions of the actual bed. Um, basically, this rear section is a standalone section that was fastened to the front section. So I'll put this down. So the rear section was built first. The actual overall dimensions of the frame, not the plywood, but the frame is 46 inches wide by 24 and three quarters of an inch 
long, okay? So 46 inches, then the total length of this is 24 and three quarters of an inch. There's another piece of two by three that runs behind here that has this, this is a um, three inch ripped piece of plywood that's fastened in to that two by three that runs behind here and the horizontal, or the, uh, the lengthwise two by three as well. This is a separate piece of plywood that we piano hinge. So we had to run a second two by three to take this hinge and to give it enough strength. So you're seeing the second two by three here. This is a hole that was drilled for our mounting bracket or a mounting piece so we could mount everything. So there's a total of uh, one, two, three, four, five two by threes that make up the frame. And then for the legs, this is gonna be a decision you have to make. Uh, our height might not work for you, but basically we have two by three legs, two in the back, and one on each ledge here to just keep this up. There's additional legs and bracing under the rest of the bed. Uh, we utilized an adjustable Ikea a cabinet leg for the middle, and then there's various um, proportionately spaced legs just to make sure we have adequate support. Um, so that is the dimensions for the front, or for the back, I'm sorry. Let's quickly talk about the dimensions for the slat. For the slat bed, the dimensions are for the width here it's actually 20 uh, actually let's let's just lift this up to make sure i get this accurate for the frame width it's 23 and one quarter inch from back to front and then from the very far side or very end here to the far side here the total is 50 inches so that that's the frame 43 i'm sorry 23 and one quarter inch by 50 inches and actually this gives it a little more when, when you drop it down it's actually a little bit deeper it's still 50 inches long but this actually turns into 24 and three quarter because it has to accommodate the header board and the legs that drop down um, and, and as you can see we have various legs here there's three in the back two by three legs and we have the ikea leg here um, which i'm not sure you can actually get a close-up of but this is adjustable and that's why why we did this and then we have two more legs to give this support so this is very solid uh, drop this down it's not going to go anywhere um, when you pull out the slat it's actually a total width of about 44 inches give or take a little bit but it's about 44 inches when it's totally pulled out and it really does accommodate pretty much a full-size mattress setup that we have, which is actually posted in other videos um, that we've already shared on YouTube. I want to talk a real quick moment about the slat bed, because this actually piqued a lot of people's curiosity on our Facebook group. We're in, and I'd like to actually plug that group real quick. Um, that Facebook group is a great resource, and it's an awesome community. It's called Mini RV Camping. It's a Facebook group. Check it out if you're on Facebook. Great community of people there. Um, Okay, so really quickly, I talked about all the lumber we use. We do try to use anything at our disposal. So what we did for runners, if you can kind of look at this, and it's probably not going to be easy to pick up, but with the function of this has to have these uh, stops in it. We actually just took uh, some leftover quarter round we had from a, from a condominium renovation that we did and screwed that in to allow the bumps and stops that we needed. Uh, to make this thing functional. It actually does work. Uh, I was gonna just rip plywood for it, but we decided we'd try this. It worked, so we went with it. One thing I do need to do to make this a little smoother is a little bit of adjusting to the legs and a little bit of sanding on the stationary slats um, so that it, open, it opens fine, but so it closes a little bit better. Uh, a little bit of sanding needs to be done there. Last thing I'd like to mention on this is Honda Odyssey, and I'm not sure if uh, any of these minivans actually have a flat level floor. I believe Dodge Caravan does. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure about Toyota Sienna or, or any of the other makes, but Honda Odyssey, at least this year, uh, most of the years I'm aware of, this is a 2006, does not have a level floor. So it's higher towards the back and it dips down as you move towards the front. So we wanted to try to get this as close to level as possible. We didn't put a floor in. I don't think we're going to. We talked about it. We just figured utilizing everything we have 
it works, it's functional, this is what we, we uh, are okay with and comfortable with. Um, so what we did is we took this vehicle, after I got everything in it, before anything was um, finalized, we took the vehicle to a parking garage and we found a spot that felt and looked level to us. We parked the minivan in that spot and then I ran levels on the vehicle, like on the floorboard and the back uh, bumper areas that were flat and should be level and got this vehicle parked to where we thought was level. From there, we actually came up um, with the measurements of the legs we needed to bring this as close to level as possible. So we do think this bed is very close to level. Uh, again, wherever you park, if you're camping or you're roguing or you're boondocking, you're probably not gonna be on a level surface anyway. Most of the time, we might sleep with our head towards the back. Sometimes, depending on the levelness of the vehicle, we always try to park it as level as possible. We may find we're turned the other way and our heads towards the front. So just a quick mention uh, on leveling the vehicle. Some people need it closer to level, other people okay sleeping you know, in an unlevel vehicle. Uh, for us, we wanted to get it close. We feel we did get it that way. So that pretty much wraps up um, the overall discussion on the build um, without going into great detail and actually building it on video. Uh, I'm going to do the best I can to post all of the dimensions, uh, it, the cuts of the wood and, and etc. In, in the description of the video. I'm going to link a bunch of links to what I think are very valuable resources. And if you see a link to another page in there, know that we have deep, deep gratitude to all the resources available and all the links that we have posted references to. As always, we want to thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. More videos to come. Have a great time in your minivan, camper conversion.